All right, so hello and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the next thing in the EDR development series, which is reading event tracing for Windows Threat Intelligence, which is a ETW provider, which you can only subscribe to or receive events for if you're running as a really high privileged process or service, uh, which is called Protected Process Lite, which in this case we are running as. You can check my previous blog post on how we go about that. Um, just here creating a protected process light. So this video is going to be complementary to the blog post. I'm not going to talk about the technical detail really in this video. This is more of a demonstration. So please go and read that blog post. This is also hosted up on GitHub. So you can have a look at that. I'll leave the links down in the description. What we have is our malware ready to go, which is going to inject itself into, well, sorry, no, it's not. It's going to allocate memory in a remote process, that process being our favorite notepad. So we don't have the EDR driver switched on for this. What we're going to have instead is the service running. So this service, as we've said, is running with super high privileges, the highest you can really get, um, a protected process light. Nothing can stop this. Nothing can get a handle to this. Um, it's, it's kind of a god to its own, really. Um, so we're going to start that in just a second and we've got event log open so the service is going to write everything to the event log. We will see some errors in there but that's fine, we'll talk about those. So I think we can probably go and start the service. So this is going to run that. So if we refresh the event log we should now see um, some stuff start to come through. So you can see this Sanctum PPL runner here, this is our kind of uh, application name for writing to the event log and you can see here it's telling us that it's starting the service these are all kind of custom things that we've built in now we will see some errors come through that's going to be for processes where we can't get a handle to so anything running as system we will get access denied even though we ourselves are running as system so what this is going to do we will have a quick look at the the bottom of the code um, in just a second so we have these flags here so these essentially are a index of different events that the threat intelligence provider can tell us about. The one we're interested in for this is the uh, alloc VM, so allocate virtual memory. So any time a process allocates virtual memory, we as the EDR provider, if you like, want to know about that. Um, and then down here we have um, some bit masks. So these, as you can see, are kind of mask values, which will be uh, ordered against each other to provide the bit mask. So scrolling down to our callback function just to kind of see what it's doing. Any process that contains the word malware um, or notepad uh, we want to log. So it's going to log uh, this here to the event viewer. So it's going to log it here. We can see that we've had nothing through yet. Only if um, the kind of bit mask matches this allocate VM remote. Um, so let's go and see what happens. So we'll run the malware and that has successfully allocated memory at that address. So if we go and refresh, what we can see now is there's a new event ID in here of four. So we've set this so that Anytime you get an event that you should be interested in as an EDR, we'll give this the event ID 4. And what this tells us is the remote memory allocation has been caught for the PID 1012, so that's going to be malware. The image of that is malware.exe, so it's caught it. And the data event descriptor, so we have this ID here, so we know we don't. We have the task here of 1. So if we scroll back to the source code and have a look at those constants, 1 corresponds to allocate virtual memory and then um, if we go back into here the keyword is this kind of very large integer now if we were to convert this uh, into its binary representation what we would see is is one of the bit flags set uh, which matches on on this so that's really cool we've caught that remote process uh, memory allocation now kind of people talk about events tracing for windows bypasses which i have blogged about and i have written a proof of concept on github for now the difference with this and why this is so powerful is the threat intelligence provider 
can only be tampered with from the kernel. So essentially the signals which are being emitted to this um, threat intelligence provider, the source of those is from within the kernel itself. Whereas other events, tracing for Windows signals, are emitted from user mode. I, I can't really think of any off the top of my head, but there's, there's loads of them. So as kind of a malware developer, you know, one of the things they'd be looking to do is bypass this ETW. So ordinarily what you would do is if we go and attach to Notepad, just as an example, within uh, NTDLL, we have... Uh, NT trace event. So this is a syscall uh, that essentially emits a signal from a process to say, hey, this is doing something which might be bad. So, you know, as a malware dev, what, what you would do is you would overwrite this syscall here um, just to return out or do something else. And all of a sudden you've blinded that uh, tracing session because this signal will no longer kind of uh, be emitted because it never reaches the syscall. So by kind of using the, the kernel event system, uh, someone, a threat actor, would need kernel mode execution. So they would need a zero day or a vulnerability in a driver uh, that would allow them code execution um, in the kernel or, you know, a rootkit, something like that. So really powerful stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you've learned something. Please go and check my blog out. Uh, and have a look at it on, on GitHub as well. Uh, give it a star. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and all that stuff, and I will catch you next time.